The web has become a really crowded place. A lot more people are using it than back in the 90s when HTTP was first created. And certainly, it's a lot more crowded than back in the Usenet days, back in the 80s. Now, on top of all of this crowding, the web has also become a lot more bloated. It's not just that there's a lot of websites out there, but most of the websites that are out there are very heavy. The 2021 internet is like some side street in Vegas. It's all, every site is covered in bright ads and it's all crowded and everyone's trying to sell you something. And then there's all of this weird, like corporate flat art everywhere that has just become so popular in the last few years. Now, the blame isn't on HTTP itself. It's not the protocol's fault. And there are sites out there on HTTP that are just HTML and CSS. They don't overutilize JavaScript, or in some cases, they don't use JavaScript at all. And as a result, a lot of these sites tend to load very fast, even on a very slow connection or on a much weaker computer. Um, but if you are fed up with websites that overuse JavaScript, animations, flat art, all the other weird things that are so common on the modern web, there's a few solutions for how to deal with it. Uh, one is mitigation. So I've done a lot of videos on this channel about how to do that. There's add-ons that you can use like uBlock Origin where you can block specific sources or specific pieces of JavaScript that are running on a site. But this can be really tedious to do. You basically have, for, for every website that you go to, you have to figure out, okay, how much JavaScript can I block to make this site still be functional, for me to still be able to do whatever it is I wanna do on the site without loading any JavaScript I don't need. Like JavaScript that's used to just show you ads, um, you know, just blocking trackers and everything that you don't actually need for the site to function. And sometimes you can do that, but a lot of the time, it's so embedded into the website that you have to enable things that you don't want in order to get what you do want out of a website. The most extreme approach to hating the modern web, I guess would be to just become Amish, grow a beard, become Amish, go move out in the woods and milk a cow or something like that. Uh, but there is an alternative to dumping the modern web uh, without going the Amish route, which is to use the Gopher protocol. Now, what is Gopher? You probably haven't even heard of this if you weren't using the internet in the 90s. So it's a competing protocol to HTTP. Uh, 1991 is when both of these protocols were created. And back then they were really competitive. I mean, you would think of Gopher and HTTP as sort of like the rivalry that we have between Intel and AMD. You had some browsers which only worked with Gopher. Uh, you had some which worked with both Gopher and HTTP, and then you had some that only worked with HTTP, which of course ultimately won the competition for the web. That's why all websites that you go to, they, you know, they start with HTTP, right? Or HTTPS, right? Same thing, just with encryption. Uh, they're all using that protocol. But Gopher is still alive and kicking. There's hundreds of thousands, if not millions, of Gopher sites out there on the web today, or Gopher holes, as they are sometimes called. And one thing that does kind of suck is that you can't really access them through regular everyday browsers like Google Chrome or Firefox, at least not without adding an extension called Overbyte WX, which allows you to view Gopher sites in Firefox, or you can head on over to this site here. So it's gopher.floodgap.com forward slash gopher. And this is going to lead you to where you can get proxy access to Gopher space. So like if we click on this light version here, uh, even though I have the, you know, WX, um, Overbyte WX add-on installed, you can still view this without that. So this is pretty much what Gopher site looks like uh, in the proxied way. So this is a common Gopher hole that you would go to that just has other Gopher sites indexed on it. Uh, there's also this Search Veronica too. So uh, if we go to that, this is basically a search engine for Gopher sites. So 
Here in the search box, we can just look up a search term. We'll try Linux and we hit submit. And so we get all of these different results. And here we have one um, that's for some suckless stuff. No surprise to see the suckless devs on Gopher because it's obviously a very minimal minimalist protocol. Basically, all of the Gopher sites are just going to be text-based uh, text web pages, so they're going to load very fast, and they're not going to require a lot of CPU or RAM. In fact, Gopher sites don't even require a graphical browser in the first place. And if you're really going to get into Gopher, you might just want to use a command line text-based browser like Lynx to browse it because, again, you don't need a whole GUI to go to it. Uh, you don't even need X to browse Gopher sites. You could literally access them from a TTY as long as you have a browser like Lynx and you have obviously a working internet connection, uh, but not a terribly fast one. Again, text-based sites don't need a whole very fast internet connection. So let's go ahead and fire that up so that we can see a um, pure gopher connection versus a sort of emulated one in a GUI browser. So you would just start links and then you can give it uh, whatever link to the gopher hole you wanna go to. And so here we go. We're basically viewing uh, the same site. In fact, let me make it slightly bigger. Um, and this is pretty straightforward. In fact, I think Anyone who isn't just automatically overwhelmed by the fact that they're on a command line could probably figure out how to navigate this. It's just like the regular web, just without pictures or multimedia or anything like that. Um, so we can go down to our Veronica link and we can search for something. Now, when we're in links, instead of it taking us to a new page, it's just going to automatically uh, create this you know, search database query here. And so we can type in our search query Linux. And we get the same list of sites in the same exact order. So we really are viewing the same thing just from the command line now. And with Veronica, anytime you try to go to that link, it's just going to prompt you for a search query. Uh, so, you know, for example, I'm going to well, let me go to a completely different page first. So let's go to, let's delete all of this, Gopherpedia, which as the name implies is a Gopher page for Wikipedia. And we also have a search button here to search within Gopherpedia. So why don't we just try a random article? Let's try Richard Stallman, let's see if we can find his article. And here we go. So we can read all about Richard Stallman here. And just to show you that it is indeed the same site, I've got his Wikipedia article open over here in my normal browser. And so we can compare them side by side and see that they read exactly the same. Uh, it's just a more minimalist version of the site. You know, we don't have all of these graphical elements over here. We don't have all of this fanciness that's in the background, it's all unnecessary. All you really need is the text right here, the meat and potatoes of the site. And like I said, since we don't have to load images or multimedia, we're just loading text, everything is going to be a whole lot faster. Um, so what else was there? Oh yeah, the Veronica search query. Uh, so we can just go ahead and put this link in here for Veronica. And then you see it has us uh, going to do a search query now. So we can just do Linux and it's going to take us back to this page. Um, in fact, we can actually do something like a 200 IQ move. And what we can do is put in Veronica's link and then with a question mark, and then we can add in the actual search query um, that we're trying to make, and it should automatically take us to that page. So a little bit faster, but I'm sure a lot of you guys knew about that already. You can do the same thing on the normal internet with a you know, search engine like DuckDuckGo or SirX or whatever. And the last thing that I'm going to leave you with to show you about Gopher, um, I don't actually have it set up, but 
this guy here does. Uh, let me know if you guys want me to set this up in the comments below and uh, explore Gopher Space in this way, but you can actually browse Gopher Space in a 3D sort of VR kind of way. So this is an example of it here where this guy is browsing Gopher Space and all of those sort of like, I guess, purplish or dark blue squares that you're seeing, those are different links that you can go to. So you can essentially walk around in this 3D space and browse links. It sort of looks like how the internet gets portrayed in some old cartoons where you can like physically walk around and visit different sites, like how you would visit places in real life. Uh, and again, this doesn't use up that much computing power. Like, I don't know exactly what computer, uh, I see it's an Asus. I don't know exactly what model this is, but I assume that it's very low spec. Like it, it almost looks like a Nintendo DS, right? This is some sort of like netbook or even smaller than a netbook. So again, this thing doesn't have a whole lot of computing power under the hood, and yet it's able to browse this 3D gopher space without any real hiccups, any real issues. So Go for space. It's a really cool thing. Uh, it's easy to access. Just follow exactly what I showed you in the video and let me know what you think about it. Have a great day.